gentlemen welcome to balcony banter this is tim dowd sat next to christina hello and below us we've got ian in the corner hello we have Yuliani in the middle hi and back by popular request we have cleo o'flynn on the right hand side Woo! there Hi, guys. Thanks for coming in, guys. I do have my uh, Faulty Towers T-shirt on. I'll show it to you in a minute. <laughs> I want to thank Dennis and Irwin uh, for giving this to me. I know I said don't bring stuff over, but they said they brought it before they, they heard that I that we don't want you to stuff your bags full of presents for us because, hey, you need the space, you know what I mean? So today's uh, show is going to be a quick update from Cleo. She's going to go first. Uh, because I think she's got to shoot out, but she's got some more details. And don't forget to get the full details on her show tomorrow at 1 o'clock on uh, Adeki Radio FM. She'll give you all the details of that. Ian has been in the background there doing all the hard work as an executive producer has to do, sipping coffee, smoking <laughs> cigarettes, and uh, just just doing the, sh the, no, doing, the, doing the run of the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Run of the show. Yeah. Just keeping you in order. Uh -huh. Yuliani is a holistic mentor there in the in the bottom there, so therefore she just asks questions. She doesn't have to do anything. <laughs> exactly. Um, and we've got to do all the hard work of thinking. And uh, I'm just the mouthpiece. I'm just the mouthpiece. Christina, what have you been doing today? Um, not a lot. Zero. Oh, and I, and I had a car crash. I'll tell you all yeah. about that in a minute. So but you took my sleep away from me. I took your sleep away. That sounds like a song. That sounds like a song. Mm -hmm. So ladies and gentlemen, this is Balcony Bouncer. We're back in two seconds. And we're back. So it's very, very exciting at the moment. What I have got is live pictures from the volcano. I'm just going to show that for two seconds, Cleo. Then I'm going to bring okay. you in, if that's okay. So yep. these are the live pictures uh, from the volcano in um, Cumbre Vieja in La Palma. Cumbre Vieja means the old summit. So I'm assuming there's a new summit. And uh, it's been spouting off today, and it actually reached the sea, I think, last night or this morning. And last so night. La Palma has a new coastline now. Um, the old, the scaremongering uh, about the the acid rain and the and all the uh, the gases coming from the sea didn't really happen. But uh, Cleo's going to tell you all about that in a minute. Let me see if I can do this now. So here's the volcano, and here's Cleo. Are Hi you okay, guys. Cleo? Go right ahead. Yeah. Well, yeah, you're right. The I mean, I I think scaremongering is possibly unfair because uh, these have been warnings. The scientific team who have been in place since the beginning of September have what they have been doing is issuing worst possible scenario warnings to people because they want to keep people safe. Uh, and one of the warnings was that when or if the lava finally did enter the sea, there was a possibility and a potential that it could form acid rain clouds or sodium, chlor sodium chloride clouds that would be dangerous to people. And one of the reasons they, they've been saying that is in 1971, the last time this erupted, the only person to die during that eruption was somebody who inhaled the fumes caused when the lava entered the sea. So so there was a reason behind it. Um, and you said, I mean, maybe the, the new summit, if that's the Cumbre Vieja, maybe the Cumbre Nueva is being created as we speak by the lava falling into the sea. I mean, it. I think phones pinged all over the place yesterday at 11 p.m. when it finally made sea fall, if you want to call it that. This has been threatened since day three of the eruption, which is, you know, it started 10 days ago. Um, but it's been more of a spectacular than a danger because, as you say, these vast clouds that we were being warned about haven't actually m manifested themselves. That being said, 
yet always has to be put at the end of any sentence about this lava, lava and this volcano because it hasn't followed the rules. Uh, it has skewed the predictions of the scientists. It's, there have been more vents open than they thought, an extra fissure. Uh, it went from 16 to 600 meters in width, the lava flow during the 10 days. So nothing has been uh, safe to predict about the volcano. The only thing that I think we can say is that the emergency services did their job and that no injuries or deaths have been uh, have occurred among the population, which, you know, fair praise and fair play to the guys who did their job. Important if people are interested in just what's going to happen to those people, that it, there's over 6,000 people have been evacuated. About, 60, about 600 properties have already been destroyed by the lava. Um, yesterday, the Spanish government declared officially the whole island of La Palma a disaster zone. And that meant that they could immediately release uh, 10 and a half million euros into the hands of the Canarian government who can now go and buy homes like now, next week, the week after, for people who have lost their homes. So they are beginning already to buy properties to house people. It's not the same. It's not the same as losing your home or, or it's not going to be the same house that might have been in your family for generations. But as we've seen from the pictures, lava doesn't go away. It's not like a flood or, or you know, that leaves behind a property to be recovered and, and uh, renovated. Lava destroys and obliterates uh, and creates new landscapes. So that's what's, what's happened. But for now, um, the only thing I think the authorities want to say to people is, there's a two mile nautical exclusion zone around where the lava is falling into the sea. And there is a 3.5 kilometer zone around where the eruption is taking place. Because even though the acidic rain didn't happen, the clouds that you see in the pictures right in front of us, they have got tiny particles of lava in them and they can cause skin, eye, nose and throat irritation. So people are being asked to stay indoors and if they have to go outdoors, they have to cover their eyes. You see the reporters from TV Canaries are now wearing gas masks. They've been wearing goggles. Uh, people are advised to wear long sleeves to protect themselves. So there's still danger in the air, potentially. But so far, um, what has happened is property has been destroyed, but people haven't. And I think that's always a good thing. That is fantastic, Cleo. Thank you very much for that quick update there. Um, I did look at some of the reports, and let me do this. I did look at some of the reports, and there was a few people on there that had homes, and they were very emotional about losing their homes. You were saying yes. that the, the money's been released now to buy homes, and yeah. uh, I did also read that online. Um, so are, are these going to be bought for the people or is it just temporary housing for the 600 displaced families until they can start to rebuild with some sort of insurance or is there an insurance? Well, for, I mean, the, a lot of questions there. I think the fact that the area has been named a, a disaster zone will actually mean that some of the insurance policies will now pay out. Okay. So that's one of the things. Rebuilding, where will they rebuild? I mean, it is quite possible as well that areas where the lava has flowed will be considered zones of scientific interest. So I think okay. it's quite doubtful. The map won't look the same. You can't kind of pull up a, a, an ordnance survey map and say, this is where my house needs to be built again, because quite possibly all of those contours have changed. So from what I understand, that 10.5 million is already being used to buy permanent homes for some people. Wow. I mean, I don't think it'd be able to house all 600, but they have moved very quickly on this. Yeah. And Pedro yeah. Sanchez, the Spanish prime minister, who was here the day the eruption started, he canceled a trip to New York and flew here, as did the king and queen. He said he'll be back. And he has said again nationally that the people of, of La Palma can rest assured they won't be forgotten. Well I'm done. sure there will be people who won't get Every, nobody will be able to get back what they've lost. That's impossible. Okay. But I have a feeling that possibly helped by the fact that you have socialists in Madrid, in the Canary Island regional government and uh, in a lot of the smaller governments. So it's it's one party working together at all level of administration. They have said we are working together to make sure that people will be rehoused as soon as possible. Um, I mean, there are some properties already up for sale uh, or for rent, and I think that they will probably then also begin building. And the fact that it has been declared an emergency zone means that they can cut through a lot of the bureaucratic tape quite quickly. So, I mean, that is a positive thing. 
Yeah, and the pictures we're seeing is from Canary and TV, which they've been broadcasting for the last 10 days live on YouTube. Uh, you want to say yeah. something about that? I mean, I have some colleagues who work there. Um, we're, we're a small bunch of journalists who work in, in Tenerife and fair play to the guy. They were there with the scientists before the volcano erupted. Um, and again, this is down to the excellence of the scientists. They, the camera was actually sh shooting the zone with a, with a reporter doing a piece to camera when the cameraman starts to say, like a panto, behind you, behind you, <laughs> because right at that moment, live on television, the first eruption began. So wow. they have been there from the beginning and they well, have they, obeyed all the rules in terms of, of security and safety. It's no easy task to actually do a live broadcast in front of a camera in a gas mask, but they have done it. And, and I, you know, very professional and very well done to them. Well done. Yeah. Well done to everybody there. And uh, you've been uh, interviewing people some yesterday and today and that you're going to publish that tomorrow on your right. um, radio show? A, a colleague. A colleague who's who's an excellent kind of she's an excellent human being, but an excellent feature journalist too. A woman called Barbara Belt lives in La Gomera, but she went to La Palma to work as a freelance journalist. So she 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 brought she recorded a piece with me for my podcast with Janet this week. But she's coming on live tomorrow. She's back in La Gomera now, but she's going to come on live with me tomorrow and talk about the people she met while she was out there. I mean, she spoke to residents, she spoke to emergency service workers, and she's just going to kind of talk through the human side of the effects of what we're seeing on our screens right now. Um, so I'll be talking to her about all of that tomorrow, as well as other things, because it's the first uh, English time back on Radio Sorelaje tomorrow between 1 and 1.30 on 107.9 FM. Thank you, Cleo. And on that note, I'm going to say thank you and let you go. We'll go back to this, this view here. And uh, you can stick around for as long as you like, Cleo. Um, I'll stay for know... a few minutes and, and watch the video. Okay. <laughs> okay, so uh, thank you for that. And now I'm going to do a very quick COVID update for you guys. I've got the latest figures here, and as you can see, the whole of the Canary Islands, we're down to 1,615 active cases. We still, thank God, have not reached the 1,000 deaths in the Canary Islands there. If we zoom over now to Tenerife, you'll see that Tenerife is down to 888 uh, active cases, and if we look at the details there, you'll be able to see that it's mostly Santa Cruz, La Laguna, Arona, which is around Los Cristianos and Las Americas, and Adeji is just over the 100. The rest are not even worth talking about these days. So that's really, really good. We've gone up steep, we've come down steep. If we look at the history there, you can see on the left-hand side, it was the, the beginning uh, coming down. We, we can't get the, the first spike there, but we're on basically the fifth spike now, which was the, the, the most rapid and the highest um, Delta variant. But we came straight back down and we're back down to around about 25 cases um, per day over the average seven days. So that is really good stuff. I should imagine that maybe even tomorrow we might even go to a different a different level. I don't know if you know anything about that, Cleo, at all. We're on level two. I, I doubt that it's not level one yet. I'd say there's going to wait for another week or two to see how if the trend holds. But I mean, okay. I think that the overall direction is excellent. Okay, great. Cool. Did I knock something? I did knock something. I the stereo went. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yep. Okay. Great. Can I say one more little thing, by the way? Yes, ma'am. Um, the Adeje fiestas, like as we know, fiestas, romerias, all those kind of things have been cancelled for yep. the last year and a half. But there is a kind of a slimmed down version of the Adeje fiestas, which kick off properly next week. There'll be concerts. There's going to be a lot of kids' events. Um, some paid, some free, but the paid ones, even a concert with Agonai, who is now quite a big Spanish star, and he's mm -hmm. from here, all of the money that is taken at the gates and at the doors for all of these concerts will be going to help the people in La Palma. So I just wanted to give that a, a special Thank mention. Thank you. Oh, and I did read somewhere, and correct me if I'm wrong, Cleo, I did read somewhere that they're, they're not asking for any more clothes but they are exactly. asking for, mon they say all your monetary stuff will go direct where it's needed. Yeah, I mean, I was in Hipperduni the other day and you can just, when you go to pay at the checkout, you can 
just add on, you know, whatever you want, and that goes straight into a La Palma fund. Uh, okay. And most ayuntamientos and local places will have some way of donating. Okay, great. Right, so that was the uh, that was the COVID. That was the end of La Palma there, and now we come to the, the end of say, La Palma. No, <laughs> the end of, the end of La Palma. no, no. <laughs> <laughs> But now we come to the uh, the thing you've all been waiting for with bated breath, the episode eight of Yuliani's Vlog eight. 21. And yeah. uh, is, do you want to sort of like set this up, Yuliani? Yes, I think uh, uh, it's perfect. Actually, it, uh, I haven't realized how well it ties into what Cleo just uh, yeah talked about and giving us all the facts. So thank you very much, Cleo. Excellent work. And I think it goes really uh, well with the topic, how the internet and social media can influence our uh, psyche. And uh, yes, uh, I would love to, to hear what you guys have to say. Um, our audience, our friends, and also Ian, of course, and uh, Christine and Tim and Cleo. Yeah, so um, I'm curious to know how uh, how the whole last year situation, maybe, and uh, and also now the La Palma situation, how that has influenced or can influence our psyche engaging too much. So uh, yeah, let's just uh, watch the video and uh, and see this okay. video. By the way, as as all the other ones of uh, Vlog Twenty One. Uh, was created in May 2018, so mind it's three years ago, uh, and um, yeah, I think it, it it fits perfectly in our uh, today's situation. So here we go. <laughs> okay, roll VT. Hi guys, this is Juliane with Vlog 21, episode number eight. And uh, first of all, I would like to thank very much uh, for this question that I got. Um, and it's about social media and the internet and how it influences our uh, psyche individually and uh, in a um, collective sense. So um, no doubt uh, social media and, um, and the internet um, is a global thing and it connects us all, um, people we know or people we don't know. So they can all connect. But at the same time, I think it's a, a very individual thing. And as in everything, uh, you have a positive side and a negative side. So there are positive aspects about the internet and social media and negative ones. And um, I would like to put them more into the sense of productive and non-productive. So, um, um, for example, non-productive would be um, to be nosy and to gossip on the internet. So uh, if you don't have anything uh, good or positive or creative to say, then uh, just um, don't engage or don't put anything. Um, better solution would be um, to stay curious. Yes, you should always stay curious, uh, but then um, be curious to learn new things and to get things uh, moving forward. Another um, um, non-productive um, use or, uh, of the internet or uh, social media would be to uh, distract your own self uh, from, uh, from your own self. So distraction from your own self. Uh, so we, um, we all know that, I guess, uh, I'm, I include myself as well, that sometimes I catch myself scrolling and then it's distracting me from uh, things that I uh, I actually need to do uh, but um, more productive uh, would be um, more productive behavior would be uh, to work on your own self and um, yeah or engage in in a project for example um, another non-productive uh, use or tool uh, internet um, use would be to fill a void that you might have in your own life uh, so something uh, is lacking in your own life and um, by uh, reading and by uh, using too much social media um, you try to compensate um, this void you actually have in your life. So more productive um, behavior would be to take action, 
to actually take action and um, start networking uh, with like-minded people or um, try to reconnect with uh, with your loved ones or with your family or um, just um, yeah get more uh, going and get more into the flow of actually creating and um, taking action um, as you can see it's all a matter of choice um, where you want to uh, put your energy to and it depends what uh, priori uh, priority you give it and um, it's also um, yeah your own self who's gonna say um, yeah stop if you see that you engage too much in, in non-productive um, activity using the the internet and social media then it's your own self-control that's uh, stopping you from doing that so um, I think um, it's always finding the balance between the virtual life uh, social media internet uh, and the uh, and the life uh, beyond that I would say outside outside internet and social media because uh, I'm not gonna use the term um, uh, real life because uh, social media and internet is so real as um, as everything in this uh, world right now so um, uh, it has become so real uh, that it's real world as well so um, yeah find the balance between um, social media internet and um, and the world outside of that and then um, some really great experiences are created sometimes in this world outside of uh, social media and internet and uh, you can actually have and experience a lot of fun so if uh, you want to leave any comment for me um, uh, I would be happy to uh, hear or listen to your uh, comments or read them and tomorrow I'm gonna be out with the next video with number nine thank you so much for watching guys and see you tomorrow bye well there we go Juliana yeah. you have sent a stage that went quick huh? uh -huh. <laughs> well good. thank you Christine good. Good. thank you Yes, I mean, uh, no doubt there has been a lot of good things um, about the internet and I'm just gonna, for myself, mention just one right now because it just happened today that I realized this actually. Um, that's also the reason why I, uh, I'm remotely joining in today. I picked up my mom from the airport and, uh, and, and I was like, oh yeah, I mean, it's a year ago that I picked her up from the airport. So <laughs> that is a long time, but it just didn't feel like a long time it, because I've been talking to her uh, on the phone or, and, or um, video calling her every day, basically. So it does not necessarily seem um, so long ago but it felt it felt good and that's what i mentioned in the video as well um, good experience then in real uh, reality to be able to to hug somebody and uh, welcoming and you know all this lovely jubbly things so lovely jubbly i like that <laughs> yeah how do you feel about this uh, ian um in how how did the internet um and social media influence you in over the last maybe let's take the over the last two years not I me mean, normally i i don't do very much on social media and the internet and that <clears throat> but where i found it a great help to me was when i was a uh, booking secretary of our village hall mm. uh, mm -hmm. I actually moved all our all the work onto the internet to make uh -huh. it a lot easier. And before I, before I could actually do that, I had to convince other people. I'll let you understand, we had a, a small committee, uh -huh. and basically they were uh, most of them were pen and pencil people. Ah, oh, yeah. Um, I did a wee bit on the internet before I actually joined the committee. Once I joined the committee and took over as, as booking secretary, uh, I got everything changed onto the internet and I found it, you know, I found it great. Uh, but it's it's the convincing of people. Yeah. Uh, 
to, to, to sort of make the change to do it. Yeah. It, it is simple. It is simple to do. Um, and obviously, as far as I'm concerned, I mean, I'm only speaking from a, a personal uh, a, a personal experience. Uh, I've just grown sort of into it. And obviously, look what we've got today. I'm talking to you people in, in Tenerife exactly. and around the world. You know? So, I mean, over, over, I think since, since the, the pandemic started, uh, the internet uh, has, social media in all forms has grown and it's grown very, very quickly, I find. Yeah. That's, that's my, that's my uh, uh, opinion on it. Uh, I would say it's probably grown for the better, but maybe in some instances it's maybe gone the other way, gone to the negative side. Uh, it will be, uh, I would imagine it would be affecting people different ways. Yeah. Uh, I would yeah. say there'd be a lot of people would really get into it and really appreciate it. Other people may find it, uh, what would be the word for it, hurting. Um, yeah. And uh, it could probably go, um, sort of affect their mental thoughts. You know, eventually. Absolutely, yes. Uh, that that to me is the worrying part of it. Um, there is, let's face it, there is there is so much of it now out there. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't matter what you do. You turn on the television, uh, media there. You get everything coming on. You you go onto the internet. You can log on to anything. Um, you have, to, I feel, you have to have a very, very strong willpower uh, to be able to decipher the good, the, the positive stuff from the negative yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah, yes, you know? absolutely. You're right, Ian. Uh, I feel the same that you need to uh, have a good filter, and like you mentioned, uh, yeah, a strong, um, yeah, mind or w will or. Well, if you don't want to call it will, but then at least uh, um, a, a desire to put uh, priorities right. What is uh, what is my priority? Is my um, and if if my if if my um, thoughts or my engagement online goes more towards a direction that. In, you can actually uh, become more aware of that. If my uh, engagement goes more in a in a negative direction, and sometimes we are not so uh, aware of it uh, right from the beginning, but uh, we can be become more conscious about it. If it gives you a bad feeling, or it gives you some some kind of um, uh, overwhelmed feeling then obviously it's a it's a good indicator to uh, to make a checkup is it too much time that I'm engaging in this and even though I might not um, might not give or out any comments yeah, yeah, or yeah. I'm not an active uh, engager but uh, yeah. even uh, even um, taking it in um, as audible or vi visual um, mm -hmm. uh, can can make a huge uh, uh, impact on uh, on your uh, yeah mental health absolutely, and uh, and I I for example like um, of of course we feel with what's happening in La Palma I did as well I came back from a from a hike and I um, and my friend said to me uh, turn on the TV uh, the the eruption on La Palma just started. And I was yeah. like, what? So, <laughs> okay, exactly, what? exactly. What, I mean, when you, when you saw that, what did you take out of that? Like, whenever you saw that, you sort of, you went, oh. So, I mean, what, what? yes, yes. It's it's like you you see it, and of course, there are so many pictures, and also pictures that are um, shared on the internet about this incident, the same as the pandemic or whatever. Uh, yeah. content yeah. that is yeah. out there yeah. Yeah. Um, but if I feel that it uh, it causes uh, m me to to feel uh, bad about it then uh, it's not really uh, worth um, engaging better better could be um, well okay that thing is happening 
it's a fact yes i cannot do anything about a, a volcano um uh, or i cannot just switch it uh, switch it off like the light mm -hmm. i cannot do that but what i can do is um i can maybe donate or i can uh, maybe clean my closet and um and uh, give things uh, yeah, and yeah, send things yeah, yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. i can do yeah yeah i mean looking looking at the the negative and the positive side i mean uh I would say thank you to Cleo tonight uh, yes. for giving us actual information. Yes. The unfortunate thing about the internet, as I said earlier on, there is so much misinformation out mm -hmm. there. And as I said, somebody that's sort of uh, near or sort of, it's not able to grasp that the false stuff, mm -hmm. it could lead to a uh, uh, sort of a mental i wouldn't say a breakdown but you understand what i'm trying to say onto that line i mean let's face it it is great for information and there is a lot of great information out here. exactly yeah, yeah. Uh, but there is a lot of hype of hype yes and yeah and uh, yes like uh, like i said in the video it's uh, uh, oftentimes um also distraction um maybe that um you don't know or we don't know what to do in a, in a certain situation and then oh yeah well i cannot do anything uh, it's out of my control uh so well might as well um distract um yep. distract myself yep. yes uh distraction is uh, is is okay and is good but how do you uh, distract and uh, distract yourself? Are, are you coming uh, closer to yourself while distracting yourself? Or are you pulling away from your inner self? And that's a very um, important thing to, to become aware of, actually. Um, distracting yourself, pulling away or coming closer to your own self that is um i think that is really uh, a key and that can happen very very quickly and mm -hmm. we sometimes don't even realize how quickly it can happen i i was i was actually i was actually thinking about you actually just said it there pulling away your inner self how do you feel about it how do you recognize that uh must must i pull away from that and disregard it that's yeah that's that we that's that fine line that you're on yeah that's the fine line and it's also this this moment where we feel sometimes that we lose connection and uh, and it's getting it's just getting too much and then um i find i found it a good um thing to do in um over the last two years or even yeah the last two uh, year predominantly is uh, really having a, a, a social media or internet detox day. So just nothing at all. Uh, and just outside enjoying nature is the very good reconnector with yeah, your own self. Yeah, you've, you've, you've got something there that you can, you can let it out. You go out your nature, you go on your walks, you do your, your wee bits sitting out there uh, and you, you feed that back into to us, which we really appreciate uh, on that. That's that's an outlet for you, but there's many people don't have outlets. This is where it builds up mentally. It does, it does, but meditation you can do anywhere. Start when you go to the loo. That's the easiest place where you can start. <laughs> and there is, there is a loo everywhere, I think. <laughs> <laughs> ah, well, that's a, that's an idea. I must try that. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to I'm gonna save Ian now. I'm going to save Ian. <laughs> I'm going to save Ian now. Save him. I'm going to save Ian. You know, if he starts talking about the loo and uh, and I've got him big on the screen, there, I'm going to save him. So. <laughs> Christina's good at meditating. When I go for my morning walk, she meditates a lot, don't you, kid? Yeah. Sometimes I come in and she's still meditating. <sighs> yep. Good on you, Christine. Good on you. 
Yeah, but she's traveling to other worlds. Uh -huh. She's going. To, she's traveling to other worlds as we speak. As uh, we speak. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, uh, she she said I, I nicked uh, her sleep today because I had a car crash. Yeah. Car crash. Really? Yeah. I was going out my gate. I don't know if you know. Outside the gate, we've got this uh, wannabe roundabout, which isn't a roundabout. Wannabe. That's yeah. really well put. It's wannabe, a wannabe roundabout. roundabout. Yeah. And it used <laughs> to be that if you're coming up the hill. You had to stop for people on the roundabout, and then they changed it to say if you if you're going round the roundabout, you've got to stop for the people coming up the hill. So it's like a yellow thing with a give way, and now they've put a, a sleeping policeman there, so it looks like you've got to stop, and then the other guy stops and the other one starts. So anyway, there's a there was a, a, a load of cars going past the front gate, and I'm coming out of the gate, and as, as they were all going past, the last car went past. I looked left and accelerated, and he stopped, or she'd stopped. Oh. And and I was looking left, and I accelerated, and I just knocked the corner with a little dent in the corner. And uh, they were rushing, and they didn't like it, and the car is not broken. And uh, and he said, and are, you, are you going to admit it's your fault? I said, no. I was taught never to admit fault in a car accident and let the insurance company do it. That's because you're not a man. So thought, whatever, okay. whatever, oh. yeah. You know, if you say that, so, if I that is so, <laughs> let it go. If that is let so, but anyway, we, you, they, they ended up calling the police, and I'm sat there waiting for the police. So I couldn't go for my walk this morning, and uh, in the end, the police called back and says we're going to be about four hours because we've got other things to do. And uh, but if you want to come in to the police station, so that they, they made us all go to the police station. By this time, I'd already done it in my, in my app on the phone, my insurance, mm -hmm. uh, the party, yeah. And yeah. Uh, we got there, and the policeman said, "Oh, you can't park here. You got to park there." And they put us round. We eventually got out of the car, got to the police station. The policewoman came out and sort of said, "Anybody injured?" No, she says, "You don't need to report it then." Usual, yeah. That's the most important, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, and then uh, Christine uh, was still meditating. Then uh, I got back, and she says, "You stole it. You stole my meditation because you came up early." <laughs> <laughs> he phoned me two times. I phoned her. I was yeah, just I, I phoned her to say I had an accident. She's saying, "So what? I'm meditating." <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. No, she was very nice. <laughs> and you, did it, you phone? Did you phone today? Did you had girl time? Today, Christine. Yeah. A special yes. girl time. Girl For time. Stephanie's birthday. Exactly. Happy birthday, Stephanie. Happy birthday, birthday Stephanie. Stephanie. If you're watching. <laughs> and if you're watching Malika, it's not your birthday yet, but we'll say happy birthday to you and your birthday as well. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go right. to the comments. Yes, please. I've starred, yes, yes, I've starred a few comments. I was going to uh, ask. Oh, I have to say, um, yeah, I have to give a shout out, actually. So, Neil Davidson, if you're watching this, uh, hello. And uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. See if you got a comment or anything. If you want to join, then let us know. <laughs> I didn't see uh, Neil in the comments, but he's usually around. Yes. Let me just see what the ones I, I starred here. They, they, were, they were going back towards... Oh, why won't that work? Oh, no, faulty towers moment. I'm taking my life in my hands. I was, yeah. Here we what go. What would it be without... Uh, Ian Mawson's watching from Cyprus, but he's going to be here next year in July, and he's going to buy some drinks. Cool dude. Nikki says social media, unfortunately, has a few nasty people who only see toxic behaviour in others and not themselves. Uh, Diane Parotta from New York saying hi from your work. Lovely being able to be here and loves us all. Roger Channing, evening, everybody. Ian the doorman says evening from a very hot reef. Was that the Great Barrier Reef, Ian? <laughs> <laughs> or the Tenor That's, Reef? <laughs> yeah, Tenor, ah, tenor Reef, yeah. And he was going to stalk me today as well, and, uh, and, and I, didn't, I didn't turn up. Uh, Mark saying, rub it in, why don't you, Ian the Doma? Because Mark was here last week on the Monday meetup. And uh, Richard Walton saying, man, rants were public when I was young and I got the consequences. But today with social media, I can get away with it without consequences. Yeah, but don't forget, with the social media, everything you do now is online forever. 
when I was young, I could do stupid stuff and nobody was filming it. So that's that's the good, that's the positive thing. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That yes, true. I think I feel we've got we've become very transparent. Also, I mean, uh, it has two two sides. Um, uh -huh. It has the side that you can hide, obviously, uh, very well. Um, in social media, obviously, you can uh, create you, your John? avatar. <laughs> Or, or hide anywhere, but uh, in the end, um, it, it also reflects the behavior you're having. Uh -huh. Be, it, it shows, and, uh, and it, it's something you cannot really hide too long. It's yeah. like we, we were talking about last week in the, in the mirror, it will always reflect. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to. I just want to answer think, Jill yeah. Gardinier asking if um, Ian is an executive producer. Is he on the payroll now? I just want to confirm that Ian is on the payroll and he gets paid exactly <laughs> the same amount as all the other executive same producers. As... In fact, I give him <laughs> double what I give all the others. <laughs> Two zeros. <laughs> but. But I will be. We will go out for dinner when we, when he comes over, and we'll see whether there's money in the pot for that. So if you want to, if you want to, to go and uh, and help us out um, for that, then you don't forget you can go to timothydowd.com and uh, support the channel. Well, that's cool. It's it, it's it's right over everybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> go to timothydowd.com and, and and go to the support page, and you can support us there. Uh, you can join the channel here or you can donate online and all the money that you donate goes to uh, helping you inform you like that we're doing today and uh, having fun. So if you want to come and have fun as well, don't forget every Monday we have meet up Monday. I'd like to thank all the people that came last Monday and there was, uh, there was Ian the doorman and Maria. There was, um, Oh my God. Uh, Annie and, Lee and the two people that I forgot their names three times and I I, I, I burnt it in. I th oh, it's but uh, I, for I forgot them. I forgot them. Oh my god. Oh, you uh, the German guy. Oh, the, the, the German guy was Detlef. <laughs> and the two others that were there, I asked them three times the names. It's it, I've got it on the tip of my tongue. On the tip of my tongue. Can you see it? <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, there. Uh, right. I'm going to pull it out. Right. <laughs> it was Wendy and Peter Pan. There you go. Wendy and Peter Pan. It was. Peter Pan. Yeah, and Wendy. Yeah. Wow. Oh, God. I, I feel so embarrassed now. <laughs> I even made I even made an Eselsbrucker to remember it. It's, it's not coming. It's not coming. I do apologize. I'm going to go. I'm going to go and watch it again. I'm going to apologize to you profusely. <gasps> what? <laughs> Two less subscribers now. Oh no! Oh, listen, listen, listen. I think can it was I, Jill I... and Barry. Jill and Barry. Thanks, Ian. Thanks, Ian. <laughs> it was Jill and Barry. Amazing. <laughs> I, I, I'm not saying that their the names were so normal that for me it was really hard to to remember. I do apologize for that. Jill and Barry. There you go. He got a pay raise, right? Yeah, I got a pay. <laughs> let's let's say uh, a que a question for you. Can I can I throw a question back to you? To to Juliana, yeah. To 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 yourselves. To me. If if you want to put a, a, an answer into it, what did we do before we had internet and social media? I can answer that. Um, if if you're talking about how did we interact before yes. social media, then basically uh, children would go and play outside, basically. Mm -hmm. Kick the con. Kick, yeah, they, 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 they would interact physically. And um, the... The youngsters would go to the pub. Yeah, the youngsters would go to the pub or the, or the youth centre to, to do their, interact, their social interactions. Um, so normal people, working class people would go down the pub or the social club to, for social interactions. Um, getting information, uh, kids would 
would uh, read comics and watch watch the TV. Yeah. Uh, so John Craven's News Round for the youngsters was was a big thing in the Britain. Um, the, of course, the news uh, would come on at a certain times, and you could get your news there. But there were also um, newspapers, real newspapers then, that yep. uh, that just said the news what had happened. And there were also tabloids then. And even in America, you know, there was these tabloids that was sort of say an alien ate my grandmother or something like that, you know. So you had all the same weirdo types of people. And there'd also be flyers out on the street and little fanzines and magazines that people would self self produce. So we'd been producing rubbish, misinformation, propaganda for years. It's just made it easier to get it out there now. Yeah. So I think yeah. I think nothing nothing much has changed. It's just the funnel has changed. Yeah. But I've exactly. said this before, and I'll say it again. I'm 60 now, so anybody between 50 and above now has probably not really got a filter. If you're under 50, I think you're you're right in the in the area where you can filter your information, where you know that it's all rubbish, and you just filter out the bits you want. But anybody who's 50 and above gets overwhelmed by the amount of information out there yeah. and yeah, is definitely. surprised when half of it's not true, which mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. it, 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 we really need to teach older people like me that not everything you read... I mean, it used to be don't, don't, don't believe everything you read in the newspapers. And it's exactly the same for the internet, but it's times a million. You know, yeah. so yeah. it's it's yeah. a tool like any other tool. And don't forget, we're we're not talking about the whole of the planet here. We're only talking about a small privileged group of people that are mm -hmm. uh, that are able to look at cat videos. All the up and coming uh, <laughs> countries are using the internet for fantastic innovations. Like um, this, uh, there's a book called The Springboard Story, where uh, somebody in uh, in in Africa could log on to the CDC website in in America and find out what they would need to do to cure malaria. You know, I mean that was a that was a fantastic thing there in the 80s uh, when it all started kicking off, and uh, and in the 90s. So you know, the internet has brought such benefits. And you asked Ian what's happened in the last two years for the internet. YouTube for me. YouTube for me has given me a platform yep. Yep. Um, that you wouldn't believe. It's also helped all the people that watch us to, to get to Tenerife virtually when they couldn't come in the last two years. And look at yeah. all the people we've got now. So it, it, isn't, it isn't all doom and gloom. It's only doom and gloom if you allow it. And they yeah. do say that if you, push, if you push the wall at the bottom, you're never going to move it. You've got to push the wall at the top. So just st put your put your filter on. Anyway, that's me. Yeah. Don't not cat yeah. videos, yeah. Stuart yeah. Adams. Yeah. <laughs> I'm. Uh, yeah, I feel uh, very similar. What you uh, what you just said. Um, I feel that um, distraction um, just has shifted. It's it's just a different form of distraction. Whereas um, years ago, as as a kid, um, you are distracted in a in a different way, or I was distracted in a different way, or I had to um, fill a void in a in a, as opposed to now, right? So um, internet um, is uh, is a really useful uh, tool um, and. Um, has helped uh, definitely also now in the over the last two years, um, keeping people uh, connected yeah. uh, in moments where where they were separated. So mm -hmm. um, I'm I'm very grateful for that. Um, yes, absolutely. Um, it's um, yeah, it's what Tim was saying. The filter that makes it um, yeah very. Uh, important to to filter out uh, the the right and true facts actually and uh, and it can get uh, very um, much overwhelming and um, uh, and people maybe because it's so overwhelming um, get this uh, in this sense of not 
trusting or who do I trust? What do I trust? Yeah, Mark's just um, and put that's, up a comment there. And that's, and that's uh, where I believe it's, uh, it's even more so important mm -hmm. to, uh, to trust in the first place to, uh, to learn how to trust your own self. Uh, to be able to work on that is a huge, a huge, um, yeah, challenge, and and it's, uh, yeah, it's doable, but it's work. It's uh, you got to earn that trust, your own trust. Yeah, I mean, Mark was saying now, I don't know, I think I have a filter. I just don't trust half the stuff on social media. I'm 56. By the filter, I mean that it is automatic and it doesn't bug you. So I think the people mm. over 50 have to actively filter the information where people under 50 tend to do it subconsciously, that they pick and choose their modes of communication, their channels of information. Some people ch choose the ones that are wrong, you know, like the Flat Earth Society and, um, mm. and stuff like that. So, well, I mean, I don't want to get into the Flat Earth, whether it's right or wrong or not, but you know what I'm saying. They'll choose to, to, uh, to go into a, a dialogue with uh, like-minded people that end up just disappearing up their own. Um, can you say yeah. that? On, yeah, yes. Yeah, I, I think you can. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so it's uh, it's it's basically uh, our generation, if you like, just needs to learn that the internet is not important. What people say on the internet is not important. Yeah. In fact, you got to learn that you're not important. In fact, nobody's important. We're nihilists now, yeah? We're going to be nihilists. Where's my black jumper? That's... However, we <laughs> got to like... make ourselves That's... important enough to care enough about ourselves. That's where we are important again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm, I'm really grateful for, for having met all of you guys. Uh, <laughs> wow. Some of you, not in person yet. Not yet. But coming. <laughs> I would, I would, I would say likewise, Juliana. Uh, Thank you. Definitely. Um, it's uh, put a new handle on my life at the moment. Good. Uh, I'm quite said, glad I'm that you're here, Ian, because without you, yeah. I'd have to listen to Juliana's oh. ramblings. Exactly. Oh. That would be uh, horrible. <laughs> <laughs> you, you are making it so much more. Uh, funny with your Scottish accent and with the teddy in the back. Yeah, I, I noticed. <laughs> oh, yeah. That. I think I think little Ted's creeping up on big Ted there. I think there's going to uh, be a Judy band. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Judy oh yeah, the little crowd <laughs> Judy and Archie wanna... wanted. <laughs> Judy and Archie wanted the 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 place of honor tonight. So there was a wee fight before okay. we went on here. Okay, cool. So we, the wee ones relegated. <laughs> and the next one. <laughs> I just want to do a shout out to Charlie, champion of England, champions of England. These guys were sat in a, in a bar on the Golden Mile as I did my walk on Monday. And they said, right, we're, we're, we're coming. Uh, we're in the bar and we're having breakfast and you just walk past. And I said, right, I'll go back. And, but then I looked and I'd gone too far, really, to, to go back. I was, I was just about to finish up. And Christina, I knew, was waiting for me on the Monday. So what I did is I went in the car. And uh, I drove round and I parked outside the thing. I wound the window down, bibbed me horn three times, and I said, champions! And they'd already gone, I think. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I thought, there was, you say, who's, this, who's this Brit just going around there? Uh, Charlie, if you're, still, if you're still online and you can hear what I'm saying, were you still there? When, did you hear the bibbing and this idiot shouting, champions? I would love to know, but I, I couldn't see the group, so I don't know which group you were. Oh, he was asking a question as well. Um, he's saying, "Do you think that we uh, that we're going to get stuck on the island with the um, with the cloud, with the volcano cloud?" At the moment, I don't think so, but nothing's impossible. Yeah. Somebody you else never is know, now. but it it looks uh, it looks much better. So. I think uh, keeping keeping calm uh, in situations like the, uh, these, and uh, yeah, yeah, and consulting with the with the true facts, like um, yeah. like Cleo was giving us early on. I think mm -hmm. that uh, helps yeah. a lot. I, I think it's it's very helpful uh, 
like like what Cleo just did there, mm -hmm. uh, you do your heart does go out for the people there, yeah. people that's had uh, small holdings, small farms uh, that rely on the produce, the bananas, the the fruit, the veg, and everything like that. Um, it, yeah, I don't, I don't think they're going to buy you a new banana plantation. If, if you, you well, know. no, yeah. I, I don't, I, I don't think so. But you know, it is a bit hard to take in uh, for us at this this side of the world mm. uh, to see what's happening there, to see your everything that you've probably you've probably worked for years and years and years to build up suddenly, yeah, just, yeah. just disappear. So. It is, would you say, Ian, that in uh, in moments like these, that um, that digital empathy is is has become more strong over the last two years? Being digitally empathetic with um, with with people or situations and circumstances. I, I I I I would say I I would say in circumstances, uh, yes, uh, it is it is helpful or it is helpful to put it out there to let the the rest of the world uh, see actually what, what it is what's mm. actually happening uh, yeah. onto that. Uh, yeah. I I, most, I, sorry, I, I find I find. Uh, I find it a difficult thing to talk about um, yeah. like that. Yeah. Know? I've read the other day, um, it was kind of uh, cute. There was a little girl uh, and she wrote as all those um, explosions were still uh, strongly happening. She, she had written uh, a letter, which was um, also shown in, in one of the newspapers. I think I read it in the Diario de Avisos. Um, and and she was just giving her own little wor words, but uh, it was so empathetic and um, and a nice uh, gesture that her letter actually got also printed. Uh, so that uh, was very yeah, kind. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, we're coming up to the hour now, and I have to finish uh, on time today because mm -hmm. I have something to do. I just want to show you my T-shirt, and I wore it, and it's, it's going to be my lucky T-shirt now because there was no um, Faulty Towers moment today. No. Woo hoo hoo! <laughs> All right. But next week we are back. I'm back on the balcony, so I'm. I guess we're going to have Faulty Towers moments again. Yes, it's all your fault. It's all your fault. Yeah. Well, um, no. <laughs> uh, are you bringing <laughs> are you bringing us a, a, a secret guest yes so next week we're gonna have what is it um respond versus react uh is the topic another yeah. uh, vlog vlog nine react. already yeah yes yeah. Yeah. respond versus react what's the difference <gasps> We will find out. <laughs> we will find out. And if you want to take a sneak peek, then uh, you're welcome to visit my channel, uh, Juliana Nendl, and go check out the episode beforehand. Uh, all the details <laughs> of Juliana's channel, Cleo's channel, and everything you need to know is in the description as we speak. Go down there and sort yeah. it out. We're going to finish off with uh, Vamos a la Playa again because we enjoyed that last week. Uh, but before we do that, I'd just like to thank each and every one of you for joining us today. As and I say, I've got a, you've got something. A sad message. Oh. Our little lizard has died. Our little lizard has died. Oh no! Yeah, oh. but he was very brave. He died in the living room, and then all the little ants that we can't get rid of came to his funeral and I <laughs> wrapped them all up. It won. So he, he did us a favor in the end by attracting thousands of our little ants that we've got. And, uh, and Christina's naming the ants now. So that's, that's, a, hard one. that's a hard one. And job. you will have a new one very, very soon. I had I a massive lizard you. on the wall the other night. This uh, 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 can, I, can I do this live? Can I do this live? Ladies and gentlemen. It was a massive lizard with green skin. It was. There we go. It was a dragon. It was a dragon. 
So here, here it is. Look. Wow. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, maybe not. I picked the wrong one there. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. A photo. I'm actually doing this live. I'm downloading this live from my, from my, uh, what's it called? When was it? Must. Get, bear with me, ladles and jelly spoons. Bear with me. Are you watching me doing this or is the green lady still online? No. Oh, we're watching you. Okay, here we go. The green lady. The green lady. Lady in green. Does anybody know what she's called? <laughs> she's called Susan, I think. Susan. Wow. So this was the big lizard Susan that arrived the other Emerald. night. There you go. Oh. That's about the wow. size of my. That's about the size of my. Uh, my hand. Really, that big? Right. Yeah, it was right. that big, right. and it was, it was on the balcony, right there, right on that <laughs> column there. Oh, there's a delay here as well now. Okay, ladles and jelly spoons. Yeah. I'd like to thank, thank each you guys one of you so again much for, for coming. Don't forget to come in. next week. Uh, yeah, we're going to go round to say for everybody to say hello or goodbye. <laughs> hello. Hello. Goodbye. <laughs> well, we'll just go by Masala Playa, shall we? Yeah. yeah hello, hello, hello. And goodbye, hello. and thanks hello. for tuning in, and see you next week. Adios, amigos. Adios. Bye, everybody. Thanks again. Thank you everybody and have a great evening don't forget uh, i'm trying to go for a walk tomorrow morning and if that works out it will be okay and on friday i've got freaky friday i don't know where i'm gonna be and next monday is the monday meetup at 5 30 in chaos Slovakia. go to timothydown.com for all the information And we'll see you guys on the next one. Bye. 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 Bye.